What? Where'd this come from? Well, you know, you know I'm a station wagon guy. You know I like Fords. This is a 1953 Ford Ranch Wagon. I bought this car in 1972. I was a high school senior. My girlfriend said, I'll never ride in that car. Well, now my wife of 46 years has ridden in this car many times. It's a time that you can't, you can't even imagine now, but the guy wanted $100 for this car, and I didn't have $100. As a high school senior with a, a, a bad paying part-time job, uh, I had $85, and he took 85 bucks. So it was my car I drove my senior year of high school, my college years, my first job. It was my surf wagon. It had surf racks on the roof. It had curtains in the windows. It had mag wheels. And then about 25 years ago, I restored it. It's called Fern Mist Green. You know, the interior is redone. The door panels are original. It's got a three on the tree. It has no radio. It's got no clock. This is a bare bones car. The last year of the Flathead V8. But, this car doesn't have a V8. It's got a six. This car was meant to go to Germany. The, the speedometer is in kilometers. And it was ordered with the, 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 the optional, no charge option six cylinder motor, the mileage maker, 215 cubic inch six-cylinder engine. And you have no idea how many times in my life I've wanted to put a 390, a 428, a 289, a uh, five liter in here with disc brakes and all that stuff. And you know what, I always decided, no, maybe I'll just keep it the way it is. And I'm so happy I did because you don't see 53 Fords, you don't see 53 Ford station wagons, and you don't see 53 Ford two-door station wagons anymore. They're all gone. So. Because the weather's nice and it's winter time, it's rare to have a beautiful sunny day like this, we're gonna take this to our next barn find stop, which is just two miles up the road. Let's go. I'm fortunate enough to live in an idyllic little college town called Davidson, North Carolina, which is known for academics, it's known for the arts, it's known for sports, it's not really known for cars, however, I was jogging down this road one day, I'm a runner, and I passed this garage door open and I met Chuck and he's working on his Triumph. And it, it, obviously he's been sitting there for a long time. It's dusty, it's got flat tires. I start talking to him. I find out this road is pretty common with Triumph people because here's one Triumph. And you have to travel this far to find your third Triumph. Not bad for a dirt road in Davidson. Hello, Chuck. Hi. What do you got here? So this is a 1975 TR6. Can we uncover this? Yes. You can see it's been sitting here a while. If you, even, the, even the cutter cover's pretty dirty. Yep. Um, I, uh, I bought this in 1994. 94, so right. that's 27 years ago. I have not driven it as much as I thought I would, partly because I just got really busy with work and once it sits for a while, you need to work on it. The reason I bought this car is I've always loved the lines of it. When I was in high school, I was not fortunate enough to have one, but I knew people who did, and I always liked this car. It, you know, when I saw it, it was dusty and it had flat tires, so you've done a little bit to it. Yeah, so when you came by, I had taken some of my pandemic downtime and decided to do if to see if I could get it going. Mm -hmm. And it had not been started in 10 years. Wow. On the advice of a neighbor who does a lot of work on, on older cars, I uh, sprayed some carb cleaner in it and, and some starter fluid. And when you walked by, I had done that. <laughs> and it, if you'll recall, it was running, but it was rough. It was, it was barely, and it, it would run probably 30 seconds. Five minutes after you left, it smoothed out and started running really good. So at that point, I drove it a little bit. Um, Did you really? Yeah. Oh, you can man. still, although I didn't drive it much because you can still see the cobwebs on the tires. <laughs> and if you look under it, you'll see plenty hanging. So on the last time this was inspected was uh, 2002. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. That's 19 years ago. Yeah. And after driving it uh, probably 15 or 20 minutes, 
I started getting some sputtering again. I think, I think some things were coming through the, the uh, gas tank. And so I've, at this point, I need to probably change the filters in the fuel line. And there are a few other things I want to change on it to get it, get it uh, so it's more reliable and, and something I can drive more. And, and what's your, you're going you're gonna to hang on to it or what are you going to do? You know, every time I get it running well, I say, I, I say I'm going to sell it, and then I, then I do that, and I, I'm like, I can't sell this car. But I think my wife is probably tired of me doing that every time, so I will probably sell it this time. Really? And what year is it? It's a 75. Does it have overdrive? No. So it's a four-speed? No, mm -hmm. no. So a, a, a Triumph uh, TR6, it's a six. TR6 is a six-cylinder motor. We'll see a TR4 in a little bit. TR6, it's a push rod motor, six cylinders uh, in line, just a, a sweet little car. This kind of engine, the carbs are a little complicated, but the, the engine is simple, which is good for someone like me who's, who's got limited experience mechanically. Will it start now? I don't know. You want to see? <laughs> so I'm going to try it without any ether. Okay. I'll say a little Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> can't sell this car. I oh, know, exactly. <laughs> that's it, that's good. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's a conversation piece, I tell you that. I can't tell you how many people have said, oh man, I had that car, yeah. I hate that I sold it. <laughs> right, right. Well, Chuck, thank you so much. You're quite welcome. And uh, I, hope, I hope I come by in a year and you still have it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Or maybe I'll come, I, I, maybe I'll I'll come by and take you for a ride in it. That'd be good. All right, thank right. you so much. Thanks for stopping. We've walked probably 400 feet down the same dirt road. This is my friend, Mark Weir, who was a, a Davidson student, and he's kind of the worst kind of student because he stayed after graduation. <laughs> Thanks for having us. It's great to have you. And so let's see what you have. Long overdue. So no workplace injuries, be careful. It's a little <laughs> different than the, the first garage. For the, so the, the first sign that you're in Triumph oh. territory is the, the, uh, the oil slick. So it's marking its territory. That's right. <laughs> and we've got a custom plate to match the car. Staggerly. Oh, it's a, wow. It's a Grateful Dead song. Yep. So this is a, a, a very odd eight-cylinder Triumph engine. Um, they only were available, as, to my knowledge, in a stag. And there's not a lot of stags in the world. So if you've got a problem, you've got a problem. I was jogging down the road one day on a Sunday morning, and I heard this great V8 sound behind me. Oh. And it's Mark, and, and he just goes cruising on by, and I could smell unburned hydrocarbons <laughs> for the next mile and a half. This thing spews out stuff. I it gotta... did. It did. It's a little better now. It's, uh, it's the, we call that British car cologne. Oh, okay. So tell, tell us what you have here. This is a 71 uh, Stag, which they were made from 70 to 77, but I don't think they were sold in 70 in the States. So this would have been the first year and it has the wire wheels. The, uh, you could buy the cars with a color-coded detachable hard top or a soft top. I have the hard top, it's next door, and you'll get a peek at that. Same color. Same color. I convinced my father to buy it for my mother when, uh, <laughs> when I was 15 That's years brilliant. old. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And, and my sister's uh, husband at the time uh, taught me to drive it before I was 16. So uh, it's been a great car. We, when we bought it, it was the, the brown, the Leyland Brown. But this is the original color. We, wow. we took it back, uh, took it down. Didn't go all the way to the bare metal, but uh, went way down and uh, had the chance to correct some stuff and uh, put it back together in the mid-90s. So this has been in your family for how long? We bought this when I was, let's see, uh, we bought this in 1981. So they were, they were marketed as a, a 2 plus 2 GT to compete with a Mercedes. So a 2 plus 2 means it's got back seat. And it's an occasional back seat. It's not really a a fully functional backseat for adults for long no, trips, small but it's good for kids or dogs. Cars all original except for electronic ignition, a uh, new fuel pump, and the European spec plate on the front because I just could not bear the US spec plate. It's the oh, ugliest okay. thing in the world. It ruins the lines of the car. So. so, I mean, do you drive this car occasionally? I do, I do. Mm -hmm. I drive it reliably and regularly, you know, every 
three or four weeks. It mm -hmm. runs well in the hot weather. There's probably 900, 1,000 left in the U.S. Hmm. out of an original run of, I think, 2,700. Mm -hmm. 27,000 total made, about 6,800 for export, and about 27 to the U.S. market. Hmm. But you're, you're, you're going to keep, this is a family heirloom, you're not going to sell it or anything. No, um, we'll see. My children are probably too smart to ever want to own it, but <laughs> when we, there's a great story. We bought it from family friends, and the, uh, the matriarch, the mother, begged my mother to not buy this car. And it wasn't because she wanted to keep it. It was because she was afraid that we would have the, the uh, ownership experience that they had had with, with costly repairs. But it's, been a, it, it's squared away. It's running better than it has since I've Does owned it. Does it really start now? Absolutely. Oh, well, it's... Absolutely. Let's... The moment of truth. Wow, that's smooth, man. What's a, it's, a, it's not a very high horsepower motor, is it? No, it, it develops about 145 uh, standard. Most how, like. how big is this motor, CCs? It is, uh, it's a three liter. It's mm -hmm. 2,997 okay. CCs. Got it. And it's about 127 foot-pounds of torque. The power steering is not what variable assist. It doesn't compensate for the speed. So at higher speeds, it is a little twitchy. But it's a, it's a very stable car. It's well-grounded. Nice. Watch your step. Come into the laboratory. So what are we looking at here as far as the Jeep? So these are CJ2As, CJ being civilian Jeep, um, developed for the US military. So they envisioned the CJ2A being a farm implement that a farmer could use to drive into town. The passenger seats were an option. Um, they actually geared them down from the military Jeeps thinking they'd be used to plow. So in 45, they made 1,800. In 46, they made about 77,000. This is a 46 behind us, and this is a 45. Okay. It's estimated that there are 30 or less running in the U.S. I bought it when I was 15 for 800 bucks. You keep cars a long time. I, uh, I sat on the gas tank. I uh, had a lawn chair that I rigged when I, the first time I got it running. It took longer than it should have because I'm not mechanically inclined. And we've over the years rebuilt it and tried to get it back as close to original. It's still got a little ways to go, but given its historical significance being a 45, we've tried to keep it as original as possible. We can open the hood. So a little flathead four cylinder. Yep. So it's got a, a one barrel downdraft. Correct. This was an industrial, probably an industrial motor. Mm -hmm. They were used in factories. It was the same motor, it just differed on the head that it had. Uh, there were only two color combinations offered in 45. This and that that you see no behind no you. No kidding. This is restored and that's... This is a reference vehicle. Okay. And so I bought it uh, on my son's fourth birthday. I got in a lot of trouble. I drove up to a barn on the Blue Ridge Parkway and had the moment where the, the barn doors opened and the sun lit the dust and the light. And this was sitting there. And uh, this was owned by a guy from New Jersey. And the guy I bought it from was turned around and gave the money to charity. I didn't oh. try to negotiate. And I won't tell you how little I paid for it, but uh, it has 17,000 original miles on it. So this is the original canvas top. You can see the plastic's exceedingly brittle, um, but it's, it's the way it was sold. Uh, and this has got a PTO, right? This has a PTO, and I actually, when I bought this, I got a couple of uh, totes of parts, and I have another PTO, which they're, they're rare as hen's teeth. Uh, PTO is power takeoff, so this could, you know, you could put plowing implements in the back, or you could do well drilling with it, or you know, whatever a tractor could do. You, you could do that with this Jeep. It was really an implement. Well, it's all original six volt and uh, you know, it's got a flat tire, but it does run. Um, it's so funny to drive the two differently because this one has 400 miles on the clock. The, since the, restoration. Since restoration. The, the, uh, the shocks are tight. Every, you know, all the bushings are new. So this is the, the new leather shoe and this is the, the old worn in loafer. I mean, just, this thing just drives like butter. Sir, <laughs> thank you, Tom. Thanks for disrupting It's always your life. a pleasure. Yep. We'll see you on the dirt road. That's right, in one of these Jeeps. So here we are at the third location. So we've met Chuck, we've met Mark. 
This is Jane Avenger. Jane, thanks for opening your garage and having us today. <laughs> Delighted. And Jane's got a Triumph TR4 here. So remember, that was a six-cylinder Triumph up the road. This is a V8 Triumph, and this is a four-cylinder Triumph. So it's almost like a little Triumph museum on this dirt road. Tell us why this car is special. Well, it's a one-owner car. Bob bought this car in 66. We were living in Durham. He was at Duke getting his PhD in economics. And one day he just disappeared. <laughs> And he came home driving this car. <laughs> and I think he bought it in Raleigh. Really? He took great care of it. That's the only car he had. I always had It's his had everyday a, car. It was his everyday car. Man. He took the children to Davidson Elementary School every day. They put the top down. They sang. They still sing the songs. And Bob, Bob sang with the kids. All the time. Oh, they were great. In fact, they learned a lot of music from their dad just in the four blocks to school. So and is this the car has been restored? This car has been restored. We can just flip all this off. I'm sorry. It doesn't look beautiful. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, this bed skirt came from the Habitat store <laughs> in Canadians. <laughs> so this is, if you can think about the TR6 we saw, this is a primitive version. If you could tell, the styling is by Giovanni Michelotti. He designed quite a few Triumphs. So you can see that there's a family resemblance to the TR6 we saw off the road. But this is a smaller car with a smaller motor. It's got a four-cylinder straight inline four-cylinder. That's a newer car with the six-cylinder. So this is new paint, new top. Everything. Can you drive it? I have driven and I can't crank it right now. But, but you can drive a stick shift? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we all learn to drive. The children <laughs> learn how to drive. You know, the favorite thing in the world to do was when Mama and Daddy were off somewhere, Robert would take that thing out in the country for a spin. And they were very popular mm -hmm. because they could show up with that car. So when, when, when was the last time Bob drove this car? Bob's been not well for probably eight, and ten, eight to ten years now. He began to have old age back problems, so he had to give it up as an everyday car. Yep. But it was an everyday car, and the students loved it, and he loved going to, you know, it was so great. I mean, what could be more <laughs> appropriate than a southern college town and a professor driving a sports car? Did he have, like, a tweed coat with leather? Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> And we had a, a, a house at Pauley's Island, South Carolina, and it was always in the 4th of July parade oh, at Pauley's Island with the top down and lots of decorations and children. Isn't that great? So what it's great been members. a great part of our life. So this, this is a, a member of your family? It is. It is. You, you've been so <laughs> well, wonderful. Thank, thank you, Tom. So well, this is fun Allowing us to, have fun to share it. So one day I was driving this car, oh, just about a month ago. I'm always looking on side streets and stuff, and I see a Studebaker station wagon. So I turned the car down the road, and here it is. And I knocked on the door, nobody was home. And I knocked on the door the next day, nobody's home, nobody's home. And finally, somebody was home. And I met James Duckworth. And James is a Studebaker freak. <laughs> and I said, would you mind if we came over with some cameras and, and we compare these cars side by side? He said, sure, come on over. So tell us what this car is. It's a 57 Provincial. What brand? Studebaker. Studebaker. And what I thought was interesting, it's a 57. Look how stylish this car is compared to this. This, this Ford was so much like a truck, like a commercial vehicle. Look how stylish this is. And then if you think about 57 Chevys, where have you seen this headlight before? That's probably like a 57 Chevy taillight. And then it's got fins in the back like a 56 Chevy. Studebaker's a car that I've I personally have underappreciated for my whole life. And the more I learn about them, the more I love them. And I've been to the Studebaker Museum and I know lots of collectors. Tell us, why do you have this? What, what do you do with it? This car was actually on the internet and it was floating around and it was just so cheap I couldn't pass it up. It was in Mississippi. Whoa. And I decided that I've got a 59 wagon. I decided I needed a daily driver. So I bought this as a daily driver. Man. So what kind of motor is in here? It's got the original 259 in it. 259 two-barrel V8 Studebaker motor. Yep. Now I gotta tell you, 
this car, when I came here last time, it didn't run. He, James said, I'm going to get it running. So when you guys come back with the cameras, it'll run. As tried as he might. It did not run. It does not run. <laughs> Uh, but you think it's a wiring problem? It's a wiring. It's yeah, not yeah. getting fire right now, but... Yep. I mean, bring this camera over, over here. Take, take a look at this thing. Pretty darn stylish. Now, the original owner is still inside here. <laughs> you might want to meet him. He's, he's a little bit skinny these days. It's got a glove box in the middle. It's got a three on the tree. It's got these... Very nice, rounded tail lights. But I like this here. The, the, instead of the, the tailgate being right here at the bumper, this tailgate's moved in. You could almost sit on there and have a picnic. What are your plans for the car? I'm probably going to drive it a little bit further and then just sell it. You're going to sell it? Yes, I've got a 59 that's a two-door coupe car, Excuse a two-door wagon that we're working on. Uh, and that's going to be my daily driver. Really? But the car is 100% original inside, except for the front seat. Now, this is pretty cool. My wagon has that, too, that the, the license plate goes from this position to this position as you bring the tailgate down so that the tag moves. The, the license plate, the tag, you can see it. The cops can see it when you have the tailgate down and you're hauling lumber or whatever. What's the, how's the body on it? It's a survivor. I mean, that's the best way for me to put it. Yep, yep, yep. What would you ask for something like this? 6500 to seven grand. Once uh -huh. I get it running, I just want it to be a cheap car. I'm 45. I want someone young to enjoy the car, to get into clubs with us. But we just want the cars to be on the road. We want to keep them going. We want people to enjoy them and see them. I just got to get the electrical fixed and it'll be ready to go. Uh, can we take a look quickly sure. at your truck? I mean, Studebakers are, people don't give them enough credit and they're actually beautifully styled cars. Now, what are your plans for this? This is a friend of mine's truck. He is going to do a rat rod with it. Oh, so it's not your truck. Okay. Uh, I bought it, but he's working on my 59. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving him this to finish the work on my 59. Oh, no kidding. Okay. And this what, is- What year is it, 51? 51 or 52, I'd have to look at the title. And it's a straight inline flat six. Yep. This is a local truck. It was on a farm here in Mooresville. Uh-huh. Gentleman passed away and we just tried to save it. But yeah, she's, she's rough, but she's gonna be a good rat rod. Now, if you look at, you know, like, if you talk about style, Studebaker, they didn't have enough, a lot of money for engineering development, but they had a lot of money for styling. And even though they had antiquated drivetrains, look at look at this, how advanced this, for a 51, Ford didn't have anything like, you know, they, Ford still had running boards, big bolt-on fenders and stuff. Look how slimline this is, really. Well, what's crazy, the beds yeah. are Dodge beds. It's a Dodge bed, no yes, kidding. Sir. They bought them yeah. from Dodge. Yep, the huh. boxes on the back are Dodges. Wow, so nice to, to meet a Studebaker guy locally, I guess they are. Sir, thanks for your efforts yes, to try sir. to get it running. We but, tried. You know, it, it, it looks just as good as sitting static, so really appreciate it. Yes, sir. We've had an amazing couple of days in and around North Carolina. I'm worn out. I need a shower, I need a nap, but I had so much fun getting back on the road after 12 months of lockdown with the pandemic. And I'm sure you know, you're excited to get see new episodes as well, so. Listen, wherever you are, find a dirt road in your town. Maybe you'll find three Triumphs in a row. Look down side streets, maybe you'll find a, a wagon. These are all within five miles of my house. If they were in my neighborhood, they're in your neighborhood too. Happy hunting.